Hi, Eric here. So this time we're going to be, I'm going to be reviewing Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep by Philip K. Dick. It is, as it says up here, the inspiration for Blade Runner. So having seen the movie, having loved the movie, I uh, figured oh, I might as well read what Ripley's Ridley? Ridley Scott um, drew his inspiration from. And I will say right off the bat, I preferred the movie. The book is, uh, what is it? Another 240 pages. Uh, it was quick. I'll be honest, I read it in like a day and a half, two days or something like that. Um, a page turner. But going off of the movie, uh, I kept... Thinking, oh yeah, you know, I preferred the movie. I like the movie's way of doing this better. Uh, not to say it was bad. The book wasn't bad. Um, but I don't really ever look that deep into themes or books or or, or theme, whatever. I don't really like look. I'm not very critical on things. And so, like, you know, obviously I probably didn't understand some of the themes in here. Um... So really all I got it all I basing this off of is my comparison to the movie. And for someone who does I do prefer like action. Um and the book made you think. But let me start um Do Android Dream of Electric Sheep. Um if there it you know, Rick uh, Deckard is our main character, you know, got that noir uh, detective, the whole, the whole series of that kind of detective feel to it, and I love, you know, sci-fi, I guess kind of fantasy, I don't even know, sci-fi fantasy with the, um, you know, obviously this, this review is going to have spoilers, so, but with the androids in it, um, how, you know, the question of, you know, is it right to kill something that is essentially human, um, one of the things I loved about the book which was completely omitted, which, you know, I guess comes from the title, but is humanity a reliance upon animals to prove their empathy. And I just thought that was a really cool concept. You know, if you had, if you didn't have an animal, then you were deemed something wrong with you. You were, you know, you weren't mentally fit to, to, to live on your own or, you know, to live with other people, there was something wrong with you, and so our main character is like Rick uh, Deckard's obsession with owning a real animal, and um, I don't know, I just found it fascinating, I just, I really like that concept, um, would, I can understand, would be very convoluted in the movie, uh, so they dwelt on that a little bit. Um, I think, like, I mean, I don't, even I don't really care for Rachel in the book as much. She, um, I don't know, I preferred her movie version more. I think the way they described her in the book was know, like a child, kind of. But, um, I, I don't know, I really liked her in the movie. I feel like she, like I, she didn't. I don't know. She served much of a purpose in the book, in my opinion. You know, she uh, was there to. What did she do? Just <clears throat> prove that she's a uh, an android that can dupe the system. You know, to prove that whether whether the oh, I, mean, I don't even remember the system, but to prove that she's you know to prove. That they're human, they had to, you know, or an android, they, they take a mind uh, system, weight comp or whatever, and, uh, you know, she was able to prove against it. So I get that point, but then, like, towards the end, I don't really, like, she didn't really have much of, much, much of anything to do with anything, in my opinion, but um, I feel like she was more helpful in the book, or in the movie, and that's another thing, it's like, I really like the visuals of the movie. I mean, you you got a sense of the grandeur, the the decrepitness, the, the you know the the high, the cities in one scene or whatever, and then just like you did get that this the, the utter decrepitness with the kipple, like the you know, describing just 
which was very interesting. Kipple just describing like stuff that you just discard without realizing it and it decays. And so I love that like cyberpunk, you know, low life, high technology aspect of things. And um, another thing they did away with in the movie was the mercerism. I still don't quite understand that. Um, you know, the, you hold on to like an empathy box and you become one with humanity and you walk up a hill to get rocks thrown at you. you didn't do a whole lot for me. Um, but you know, like I, I guess I probably I like the movie. I just like the straightforwardness of trying to find these androids, learning about the androids, um, learning you know, you know what make, what made them want to leave Mars and shuttle back to Earth. What made them kill humans to shuttle back to Earth and then only to just get hunted for doing what they did. And um, I just like that straightforward plot. I feel the movie, you know, obviously the movie does that really well. Just the action. Um, one thing I didn't care for in the book was Roy Batty. And like one of the main, spoilers, one of the main villains, one of the main, like the head honcho android. Uh, the movie just made him so much more dimensional. And then that speech about tears in the rain at the end. And then the book, it's just like, you could get a glimpse of his character that was in the movie, but he didn't really, uh, you know, he set up some elaborate, or not even if it was that elaborate, but some security system that tripped and, you know, kind of was evilish, you know, just a menace to society, it seemed like. And then he was shot and died. And that was it. Like, he, there was no hunt. Like, that was, I, I don't know, if, like, the book is probably more about the themes. And whereas the movie was more about the progression of the story, the plot, the the evil, the the baddies, you know, the bad guys that are decorated as hunting, and you know, the it just it just focused on the main character um, versus the androids. So I don't know if I would read this again. I'd almost just rather watch the movie because uh, I mean, the, I love the grittiness of the movie. Oh, it's just so good, and. Like I said, the book, like, I mean, you know, they, they did, the movie did the villain so much better, in my opinion. Um, it was cool to see the differences, like Pris, you know, she got a lot more, uh, I didn't realize that she got as much, you know, uh, she got a lot of screen, screen time in the book, and then her, like, destroying that spider, you know, just, you know, just hammered home that her, she had no empathy for, you know, for animals or any other living creature but herself whereas that chicken head i don't remember his name you know he did and that's another thing a movie i liked better is you know he, i just liked his profession being a mechanical he just had the mechanical dolls lying around them creepy thing and creepy dolls lying around in the movie and then here you know just he was a pet uh robotic pet delivery for a robotic robotic an android pet vet, I guess, but, um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I'd, I probably won't read it again, um, like I said, it was, it was good, it was interesting to see, like, just where the, the movie and the book diverged, um, so, you know, and then, like, I think what, uh, the one android in the, on the book was an opera singer, which I found interesting, and I do have to admit, I loved that scene where the opera singer, I don't remember her name, called the cops, and then, you know, Deckard got arrested and taken to the police station, and, you know, I'll be honest, like, he, Philip K. Dick convinced me for a minute that we have been following an android the whole time, you know, and, um, like, I was, sh I, got, I was, I was pretty sure, it seemed like that, uh, what you know? Where is this book going? Because Decker's been living in this. Just uh, you know, his, his memory has been implanted. Like I, I love that twist, and then to twist it again, and show that that, that whole scene was made up. That it was all orchestrated by other androids that have escaped, and it's just. Oh, and then they even like uh, had another 
they even employed another human bounty hunter, which I, which he didn't do a whole lot for me, right? You know, kind of prove that there's other bounty hunters with other levels of empathy, I guess, and he lacked. You know, kill, you know, he was like Deckard in the beginning. He just didn't care about killing humans, or maybe found ple or didn't care about killing androids, but maybe found pleasure in it. Whereas Deckard, it was just a job. It was just a way to get a, a money to buy a pet. You know, to buy a real animal. So there was definitely a strongly suggest to. You know, read the. You know, at least try to re you know read the book and then to watch the movie and just make your own comparisons. You know, uh, for me, the movie. You know, I, I, the movie was better. I just that's just how I'm geared. Um, but that's uh that's my review. Oh my goodness, we're a little long here. That's my review on um, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep.